in the back, somebody has a question or a, a, a critical remark, a reflection. Uh, please stand up, yes. tell us who you are. Okay. Hello, my name is Luisa Reitstetter. I'm coming from Vienna. Ooh, um, ooh yes, <laughs> University of Applied Arts. I've got a question because I think there are just for three of them, because three of them were presenting case studies where young people um, did work, uh, museum work, professional museum work, but I was a little bit also missing their voices. As Nora said, is that the criticism is coming, was implied on them a little bit, but I was just wondering about their voice, their perspective on the museum as institution. So the voice of the young, the, yes. the voice of the participants. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, who of you want to, to start? Well, I mean, certainly when, um, I mean, the council, you know, because they take, they take new members every year, um, there's a couple of members who stay on as mentors, but essentially most of the group is new every year. Um, and many of them come to the institution because of the prestige, like the perception that it will be valuable for them to be there. We have very high expectations for how to get into university in Toronto and in Canada, so there is a lot of pressure also to do extracurricular engagements. So some of that is part of what drives people. Um, absolutely, there's also generally an interest in art. And I think that part of what we spend the first three or four months doing is demystifying and maybe bursting a little bit of bubbles and just trying to really think, uh, get them to think really critically about um, sort of seeing behind the walls, seeing behind the curtain, I guess, of the institution. Um, I mean, still, most of the, the council members still really valued the idea of exhibition space. So that's part of why they kept wanting to do these exhibition projects or projects that engage with curatorial. There was a perception that that was ultimately, for, for whatever reason, probably for different reasons for each of them, that that was something that was valuable and desired. So um, they wanted to do that. And, and even presenting you know, in Estonia was, was very valuable and, valuable and desired because it seemed that they were being um, listened to and really heard in an international conversation, which seemed ultimately important. Having said that, we had very critical conversations about what it means to be in an institution right now, how to make the kind of institution that they want to work in exist in the future. You know, if they're sort of imagining themselves in roles of power within the institution, how can they kind of create it, start creating, living um, now as if we were already there, you know, that sort of concept. Um, so, yeah. You want to continue? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, in the two cases that I have presented, we have worked on a long-term base with young people around these questions. And, um, I mean, maybe just some things that I could say. One is, why, w why would you want me to be part of something that is not about me? This was... This was clearly something that kind of was there. And um, then part of our work was also to say, okay, so wh what could be the thing we want to be part of? And it does not have to be the museum. Maybe it is something as something inside, outside that does not have to decide if it's inside, outside, and so on. So this might be one side of it. And another side was also just very concretely interested in specific topics, questions. Um, we, we worked with them then in this other project also within this city and history and so on. So pa partly they said, for example, we are not interested in history, we are interested in music. And we say, okay, I mean, music also has a history, obviously. <laughs> um, so w we found sometimes a common ground in an in-between space between what our project was about, what people entered in with, and um, actually to really say what they said, I would need more time and, sh and I would need the time to show it to you, but it's really on the website, very much what they have done. But it's, it, it is interesting that they're not here, uh, which I think yeah. is a fundamental critique, not towards this uh, conference, but towards those settings. Um, that in the end we, yeah. we still talk but about I have others. to say this is also, I mean, Sorry. 
But we, th this is also, now it's the third conference in this, in four months where this happens and then we say it. So if we say it and we don't, do we really believe it or not? Now, I, I, I am not sure if I really believe it because we have organized many conferences also in the last year in collaboration with MAIS as part of this project that were for the, for the young people, for intellectuals, for teachers, all at the same time. And it was very different. I mean, it was, I, I would say I had a good time. It was hard work. I had a good time. It was not a conference in this sense. It was something else. That's great, but the conference is great too. And I don't want to do all the time. Um, I don't want, I want to, I also want to talk with peers. And honestly, the young people I work with, I'm not their peer, they are not mine. And I am also honest with myself about it. Transparency. I would just say also that with the, <laughs> when we, you're allowed to, you're allowed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. I have that effect on people. <laughs> but I would say that, that, that the, the council, when we went to Estonia, like part of what, uh, <laughs> when, we, when we were invited to go to Estonia, the, the, you know, the gallery said, okay, well then you, Cyrus, you should go. And I was like, well, no, we have to bring as many, we should bring the whole group. And, you know, there was a real tension and a push for that. And I, you know, the amount of extra fundraising, like just so much work to just make sure that as many people could come as possible. So in the end, there were seven of us who went and, you know, there was um, six young people and me. So just really <laughs> pushing, you know, um, for, to make sure that it's not always um, someone else reporting on someone else's work, right? Yeah. My wife-to-be wants to say something as well. Much. Fiance, I think we call them. Um, <laughs> uh, I, there's masses I could say to this, but I just want to say, because of what you just said, I just want to say that um, one of the most extremely difficult and challenging things that I had to do when I was working at Tate was to um, take, I think it was about 20 young people from London to on a trip to Damascus and a man. And <coughs> preparations for that were really quite challenging and anxiety making. Um, I had, te luckily, I used to work in an art school and I, I'd taken, um, I'd been involved in taking students to Russia during the Soviet era. So I sort of had some training, if you like, but um, about a day or no, a few days before we were due to go, suddenly one of the parents told me, mentioned that his son was allergic to sesame seeds. Now, if you've been to Syria, you'll know it's made of sesame seeds. <laughs> so that was really frightening. And there was kind of that level of responsibility that one has, and I had to work out how to deal with that, which we managed to, and he's still alive as far as I know. Um, but Thank th God. <laughs> but how to, how to deal with that level of, if you like, in loco parentis uh, responsibility, as well as listening, because this young man had been working with us for about a year and hadn't mentioned the sesame seeds. It was only his parent who mentioned that. So there's something around that about what's important and how we get different voices yeah. around. But there's a lot more to say about that. Sorry. And, and the professional competencies we need if we are truly uh, um, going into to that paradigm. Um, Just quickly, one more thing, because I have I know her, I know that she always does no. that. We have to think about that. We have to think about this question. Why do we? Why would we feel better if there would be a group of young people presenting their own project here? What would it make with our conference? And what understanding of participation do we have? Because, and this is exactly what I what I try to enter in. Uh, wouldn't it be much more important to have a structural and different structural understanding? that would make the structures of the institution different than to have young people presenting their own project themselves on a conference. 
Well, it's interesting that you mentioned structures because it was the only question I wanted to pose. Um, uh, listening to all the very interesting uh, case studies we heard the whole day is that with all due respect to these wonderful case studies, it, it still does, if we don't structurally change the system museum, it stays projectitis. And then when governments change, and when politics change, pro projectitis. So it stays from project to project, and when the project is over, you go to the basement, and the curator goes to the, um, goes upstairs again. Uh, um, so it's, it's it, and that's something that I hope tomorrow afternoon we can tackle, because then also politics um, plays plays a role. But it, it is it is it is true that we need to sort of structurally change uh, the system museum, and that's what I liked with um, Alistair's contribution um, this morning when you said, "Well, in the center of my museum work is now this this public." Um, um, public services, which, which um, and, and collections are a means for that instead of, and that, that then that changes your whole system museum and your, 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 the structures you have in the museum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I think we are far from that in, 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 in at least in the German museum uh, world. Um, but I, so I, I agree, I uh, totally agree on that. But you, with the beautiful yellow microphone, okay. have a question or yeah. a comment. Who are you? Uh, Reinhold Görling, Heinrich Heine Universität here in, in Düsseldorf. Um, my, uh, my, uh, my you, you can say it in, in, in German if you want. Wenn du auf Deutsch reden Kann ich auch auf Deutsch, vielleicht geht das schneller. Okay. okay. Um, wenn ich als ich den, den, also erstmal vielen Dank für diese inspiring talks. Ähm, als ich den Titel gelesen hatte, nach äh, das, das Museum deprovinzialisieren, habe ich an einen relativ bekannten Aufsatz des äh, indischen Historikers äh, Deepesh Chakrapati gedacht. Äh, äh, provinzialisieren von, äh, Europa provinzialisieren, provincialize Europe. Und ähm, ich habe mich dann gefragt, warum dieser, die, dieser, dieser Dreh. Ähm, weil äh, das würde dann auch ein bisschen antworten auf diese, quasi diese Frage, ist denn äh, das Museum eine europäische Idee oder haben wir vom Museum eine europäische Idee? Und äh, ich hatte ein bisschen das Gefühl, dass diese Frage, die Sie, oder die Antwort, die Sie dann gegeben haben, eigentlich eine ganz europäische war. Nämlich plötzlich zu sagen, das Museum hätte die Aufgabe der Tradierung von, von, von Wissen. Ähm, ich habe in all den Beiträgen mitbekommen, mein Eindruck war, äh, dass Sie eigentlich auf diese Frage, wem gehört das Museum, einerseits mit dieser Frage der Partizipation geantwortet haben, aber eigentlich im Hintergrund immer die Frage stand, die natürlich auch in diesem Titel drin ist, die Frage der Macht. Weil wem das ge gehört, das Museum, ist eine Frage, ist eine politische Frage. Es ist nicht nur eine Frage der Partizipation, sondern es ist eine Frage der Macht. Und dann, wenn ich jetzt den Chakrabati, also auf den Chakrabati zurückkomme, dann ist die Macht nicht darin, dass es das Museum gibt, für Herr Chakrabati, dass es die Geschichtserzählung gibt, sondern die Macht ist, in wie erzähle ich diese Geschichte, beziehungsweise was passiert. Und kann ich diese Geschichten so erzählen, dass sie eigentlich Macht herausfordern? Oder welche Praktiken kann ich im Museum entwickeln, dass sie eigentlich äh, herausfordern? Äh, politisch herausfordern, sowohl jetzt, jetzt mal für ein deutsches Museum in Deutsch, Deutschland, aber natürlich auch in einem ganz anderen Blick, äh, weil auch der deutsche Rahmen selber eines Museums natürlich zu den konstitutiven Momenten gewissermaßen einer einer Selbstbestimmung gehört, die dieser Tradition folgt, der, die man in Frage stellen müsste. Ich bin sehr froh, dass Sie diese Frage gestellt haben und dass Danke. Sie heute hier waren. Ich hoffe, Sie sind morgen auch noch da. <lacht> um, who of you want to answer this question? Yeah, I, of course I want to answer and I will just read the part that is about that in the, in the text. The Paramuseum questions the museum's power 
based on its own emancipatory functions, from re-evaluating values to public assembly to critical education. It appropriates the museum as museum using its own resources. In so far as it does refer to the museum with its potential for change into social struggles, the toward log logics of domination, it is sim simultaneously entirely part of the museum and also <coughs> part of another order that may have only just begun to dawn. And now I skip a bit and I come to this question of the provincialization. Du, du must not No, referat, I just give an answer, but I give it like from there because it's maybe better because I, f I felt like misunderstood, so I, I make it like precisely from there, but very quickly. In this sense, the Para Museum doesn't stand for provincialization of the Western Museum. For one, it would be resentment, and anyway, it's already the case. Just think of the stubborn self-contentment of institutions and their slow response to decades of activism and to critical museology. The Para Museum does rather calls for the museum to be de-provincialized, like in the mirror, the current state of Western museum debates sees its provinciality reflected back to itself by the Para Museum. So, yeah, I absolutely, yeah, it's a political question. This is what I want to talk about, and that's my point. Now, of course, I turned it around because I think that there is a certain resentment in this idea of provincializing Europe, that might be not helpful for a political for 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 a political <laughs> positioning against <laughs> the Western um, colonial history. You can say something, and then our Heinrich Heine uh, professor is allowed to say something as well. Oh, sorry. No, no, you can you can respond. And then no, I just wanted to. It's quite flippant what I'm going to say, actually. But it's just one of the things I've noted is the number of people who've left working in muse museums who are now doing PhDs. I have finished mine last year. Um, and Mazel tov. No, but yeah, exactly. And and one of the one of the things that I felt quite sure of was when a lot of women my generation started to lose their jobs. Um, with the beginning of Britain's austerity regime, um, I thought, okay, so most of us were involved with the 70s feminist movement, therefore, and we're still quite healthy. So we're very angry and reasonably well educated and got <coughs> decent experience. Let's see what happens. So far, I've been disappointed, but I'm still actually really interested to see what's happening, what will happen, and I think the accumulation of these PhDs could actually turn into something. <laughs> Do you want to respond? Uh, Woo! <laughs> May I? <laughs> Again, in German? The, the, the problem of, of uh, what, what uh, Chakrabarti points to is the problem of generalization of history. And um, what is the generalization of of the idea, of the European idea, not of the idea of the museum. And, and uh, there is, for example, we start with, with art history. It's a completely generalized European idea. You spoke about footnotes, but fo the other history aren't footnotes. They are the other half part, at least the other half part of history and of art history, which is not a linear history. And in a way, art in itself, and I think the examples uh, could prove this, in a way, art in itself is a part of a counter history or whatever you would like to, uh, to call it. So there is a, but it's a we will have drinks after this. <laughs> and, and, and I see a liaison just, coming up here uh, because this needs uh, much more time and maybe um, this, this um, dialogue can be open to, to, more, to more people. Um, my friend with the green mic. The green. Um, ich nehme auch Vorteil von der Übersetzung und spreche in Deutsch. Um, Ich finde es großartig, dass... Wer, wer bist du denn? Ich bin äh, Moritz von Rappart. Ich bin aus Berlin, den weiten Weg hierher gekommen, weil ich es so toll finde, dass man sich hier diese Gedanken machen kann. 
Und ähm, ich wollte zu diesem Abschluss dieses schönen, inspirierenden Tages ähm, sowas vorschlagen wie eine Kritik an der Kritik. Vielleicht wäre das interessant, weil ich das Gefühl habe, wenn ich kritisiert werde, dann werde ich nicht unbedingt inspiriert, mich anders zu erfinden, sondern ich werde verunsichert. Und ich reagiere und anstatt zu agieren. Und ähm, ich fand ganz interessant, dass man jetzt so ein Spektrum hatte von Projekten, die auf die vollkommen berechtigte Kritik an den Institutionen mit unglaublich vielen, unglaublich aufregenden Projekten äh, antworten und sich unglaublich in Frage stellen, wo aber sozusagen der Schritt zurück auf den Staat, wer sind wir eigentlich, was wollen wir eigentlich machen, was könnte unsere Aufgabe in der Gesellschaft sein, was manchmal äh, durchgeschieden äh, ist, wo mich der Vortrag von Alistair sehr inspiriert hat, dass das eine viel grundsätzlichere Frage ist, anstatt sozusagen im Defizitären äh, rumzukitten und zu versuchen, irgendwelche Sachen einigermaßen hinzukriegen, die aber eben nicht die Institution im Ganzen nochmal neu aufstellen, also Museum 3450, was wir gehört haben. Das wollte ich mal so in die Pause bis morgen geben. Danke. Wir werden heute nicht schlafen, wir wollen heute nachdenken. Ja, ganz schnell. Äh, ja, ja, äh, aber ich werde auf meine Uhr gucken. Ja, Nein, ich lese nichts mehr vor, verspreche ich. Okay. Um, uh, I think, I think um, my, my main point of what I am interested in is actually the unlearning of resentment. So now, the point is that, I mean, the main resentment is obviously the racist resentment that is growing in the fascization of Europe that we uh, experience. But then there's also another side, and Ashir Mbembe very beautifully says that um, violence creates resentment as well. And the question is, is there, is there a possibility of, a, of an anti-racist discourse of affirmation? And this is, I think this is very much also what you show with your projects. Do you want to react on that? Well, I would just say that with, uh, I mean, Shan, you know, Chantel Mouffe talks about how institutions have always been these sites of, of dialogue and disagreement and, and forum. And I think that what, um, like I think that there's this, um, you know, Asada Shakur makes this quote and she says that the only way to live with any human dignity on the, this planet at the moment is to struggle. And so part of these projects were, um, they facilitated or allowed us to physically be in the space or to ideologically be in the space with any type of human dignity was that we had to struggle and try to imagine p a potential way forward where we all were able to thrive and the museum as it currently was existing I mean, we were literally in the basement and not feeling very thriving. You know, the young people who came in um, to the gallery upstairs, you know, certainly when b before the council began in, in 1996, the second that they came in, I mean, there, there was a, an exhibition that they did that was sort of uh, one of their first projects celebrating the art of hip hop, and the gallery decided to put metal detectors at the door. They said, well, we, we, you know, and then, and then people didn't want to come in. And they said, well, that just shows that they probably had guns. And I said, well, no, it kind of shows that you're racist, actually, right? And that they're so offended that they don't want to come in. Why are you not putting metal detectors at the beginning of the Monet exhibition? You know, why are you... So this way of, of trying to... Like, Ooh. there was no way to not respond. There was no way to not, re not critique with any type of human dignity on the planet at this moment. Uh, and I've Beautifully said, uh, Milena. Uh, I'll try to speak in English. Sorry for my mistakes, but I think that the last example that I gave uh, about the Colombian uh, not museum, it's a kind of response or react, if you want, uh, and is connected with the idea of um, Alistair about. Uh, I think that what remains is the idea of museum more than the building or the collection but the idea of museum, the sense that uh, people make about their own histories, the, his own memories, and how they connected his li their lives with the lives that is, um, are exposed in objects or science or art or um, so on, so on. So um, the, for me at least, uh, the best museum is the museum that is capable to change for each one of the visitors. This, it will be the best. 
but uh, I think the, the museum, um, or at least the, the strategy to be a forum, could be outside the museum walls and can, can be um, placed where, whatever it is. Here, here. We have been conversing a lot <laughs> during the break, so I know she has a lot on her mind. Please. Um, ich werde in Deutsch antworten. Maybe I do it in a mixture between English and German, but no, I'm no, quick. No, you either do it in okay. German or so English. So I do it in German. Otherwise, I'm sorry. She's going I'm to sorry. Kill I, I'm, okay, ich mache es. Uh, mein Name ist Holzhausen. Ich bin die um, Denkmalpflegerin und Kunstbeauftragte der Erzdiözese Wien. Das heißt, ich komme auch aus Wien, aber ich habe ein Mutter, ein Vaterland, das heißt Rheinland, und eine Muttersprache, das ist Österreichisch. Meine Frage, Sie haben mir das Stichwort zu den Kunstwerken gegeben. Ich habe von Ihnen das Stichwort zu den Objekten bekommen. Mir haben in dem Nachmittag die Objekte als Kunsthistorikerin, als Denkmalpfleger, als die, die die Kunstwerke beschützt, habe ich natürlich immer die Kunstwerke im Sinn. Das heißt, ich habe auf Ihrer schönen Zeichnung zu der Blase links gehört, zu denen, die so die Curators sind und so weiter. Was passiert, wenn Sie, und ich würde Sie einladen, alle, alle, die Sie heute vorgetragen haben, zwei Fragen zu reflektieren. Was würden Sie tun oder Ihr Museum, wenn Sie eins haben, wenn Sie keine Kunstwerke mehr ausstellen dürften und ein Museum betreiben? Und die zweite Frage, was würde mit Ihnen und Ihrem Museum passieren, wenn Sie aus den fünf Ihnen wichtigsten Museum dieser ganzen Welt jeweils ein Museum in Ihr Museum übernehmen würden? It's, it's for you as well, right? She said all the speakers, so be aware. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so happy that you're here and, and, and that you um, are, an, you know, you are the agency, you are the speaker, the advocate of, of the, 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 the restorers, although, and the art pieces, um, although I don't believe in, in, in contemporary museum work that there are those different um, souls in the museum, but that's that's another story. Um, your 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 questions are also almost metaphysical, which I think is very interesting for somebody who brings <laughs> the object. But um, let's uh, let us respect um, um, the question. Who wants to answer? Um, I'll answer very briefly. Okay. Or who wants to start? Also? Okay. I'll answer in English. I'm afraid very briefly. Just to say. Um, one of the things that I left out, I skipped. Um, I was going to talk about, um, I've got a list of five points, six points, that are intrinsic to the dialogic portraits process. And one of the, one of the points was um, that I deliberately do what uh, the psychoanalyst and academic Lisa Baretza has, has described as working alongside out-of-date ideas. And for me, that is a really important point. Um, so I, for all sorts of many reasons, I'm not working in a museum as an employee, and I wouldn't do that again. So your hypothesis is just not possible for me to think of. I can think of doing something as a project in a museum, but not as an employee. That's some uh, fundamental critique here at the end of the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> um, um, I would say that the, you know, when the, the Art Gallery of Ontario underwent a renovation by Frank Gehry, and, um, it was a long process, maybe about between seven and nine years. The last year and a half of the project, uh, we couldn't have any artworks on display. The, so the artworks were all in the vault because it was too dangerous because of the conditions of the renovation. And I would say that certainly for the educational division, it was the most fruitful and dynamic and exciting time because suddenly we could play anywhere. Um, we could, uh, you know, really explore and experiment. Um, and there was, it, there was a sense of possibility that we tried desperately to hold on to after 
we reopened it with all of the objects back in the public space. So I think if that was a situation, it would actually potentially present a lot of really exciting possibilities. And I think it also makes me think of what you were presenting about the Museum of Memory and the ways that there are so many different things to, um, uh, to archive, to remember, to hold on to, to showcase, to celebrate, other than just objects. Yeah. Maybe one, uh, sorry, uh, before, and then, uh, just because um, I want to advocate once again um, for this wonderful um, 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 case, this wonderful project that is already being um, um, introduced, and we can all um, start seeing it afterwards, is of course this what was it called? Um, open for renovation. So I mean, that's that's what you have been doing. So yeah, it creates a lot of possibilities. But you you yeah. you reacted so enthusiastic. <laughs> so please physically, yeah. isn't it? Um, I think that um, we actually need to we need to remember that um, with uh, Western art. It's a lot of power involved. So um, <coughs> it's not just uh, talking about art history, because art history is a creation and is an interpretation as well. Uh, it's about to put in side by side uh, the things that we value the most with the things that from my point of view, we need to value the most in, in, this in this time, in this period of time. That's why I'm <laughs> sure that uh, we need to um, be alert because um, putting art in one side and education in other side, we are creating a hierarchy and it, uh, we are re reinforcing um, exclusion, actually. And uh, my question about um, rethinking the museum, this project in here, open to, to, to rebuild the museum, if is, is the, the, pro the, the product, the, the ideas that they are um, constructing with the focus groups will be uh, put it in the gallery that's my question, because this is a good uh, dialogue and conversation with the curatorial team. And uh, um, about um, your defense, I, I believe that um, and tomorrow team, uh, we, I, don't, I don't think that we need a structure, but we need uh, different ways of articulating things. I think structures is too solid for uh, nowadays. I think that we need a more uh, liquid structures. So just articulation and organization. That's why we hear uh, so much about projects. And that's why we, we hear about programs. Um, the line to conduct it at the museum uh, because it's more uh, reliable uh, to put your expectations uh, on on um, an idea than from uh, um, over the object itself. So I don't I'm know if I answer. Or if I I'm a can. huge fan of the concept of Fiona Cameron on the Liquid Museum, of course, relating to the concept of liquid modernity. Uh, but that's a structure in itself as well. It's a very open structure, but it is uh, sort of rethinking uh, uh, the, the museum. Can um, I also just uh, say yes. one other thing that yes. after, you know, just sort of thinking about that, about the ways that you can kind of, what happens after the renovation project, I would say that, you know, in the absence of the objects, you know, the council sort of ran free and, and did a lot of, very, I mean, all of their work is, is sort of guided by social issues and political topics. 
um, when the gallery, uh, when the contemporary tower was being reinstalled, there was an active decision made by the curatorial team at the time, um, particularly by the very sympathetic curators who had worked well with the council to reinstall the contemporary tower based on social issues. And they directly attributed that to um, sort of an inspiration from the youth council. They said, we want to try to work in the way that they work and we're going to reinstall the contemporary tower around social issues. Um, and they did. And it only lasted maybe nine months and then there was a tide that turned again and then they reinstalled it a different way based on chron chronological order or maybe subject or um, sort of type of works of art. But there was this brief period where it seemed like the impact was actually pushing up, which was great. Um, you wanted to react? It's not going to become a dialogue as well because we have the drink, so you can... Uh, <laughs> I'm organizing all those match... I'm, a, I'm sort of the matchmaker of the day. Are you realizing that? Uh, but to give you the mic and then... It's very short. Thank you very much for the answers, but most of the answers were on the first part of my experiment. The second part of my experiment was what to do if I give you as a present the five most valuable uh, or interesting art pieces of the world. What do you do with them? I, I, oh, 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 who, who decides? Who decides? Can I quickly uh, say that when I, when I heard you say that, I thought that what I would most want would actually be people, right? So people who were sort of engaging with particular ideas or, yeah, I would be, I would want to bring five amazing people who were thinking really radically and play together. You're right, Cyrus, obviously, but actually there's a program in, in on, uh, Brit uh, on the BBC radio program called Desert Island Discs. And at the end, you choose 10 discs to take to a desert island and you're lost forever, just yeah. you <laughs> playing these records. And, um, and then you're asked one, one treasure that you want to take. And I can never decide, is it going to be a whole heap of heroin, which I've never dared take in my life, or would it be Piero's The Flagellation, which would last me half an hour, maybe. I have an extremely cool fiance, I uh, <laughs> noticed. <laughs> Um, the, matchmaker has the, the guy with the incredible sexy sock, uh, socks wants to respond as well. <laughs> but you have to sit over there then. It's, uh, or you can sit here, what, what you want. Okay. I think we all the front row wanted to respond, and it's such a great question. <laughs> but, but <laughs> so I was going to say, if, um, if, you had a, if you had an empty museum, then you just start making again. So that was my answer to the first question. And the second question, I, was, I thought, wow, the Vatican. Imagine the trouble you could cause with that. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I will answer, uh, it depends on the program, how to show the species. And I, can, and I can tell you that one of my dreams is to have a whole, uh, an exhibition, take the whole museum, but an exhibition about just one piece. Are you going to, to stay sitting here? Because it's, it's, it's yeah, fun, it's fun. Nice. Uh, we get the drinks here. Um, I'm, I'm not part of the organization, but I, I can try. Um, you have a question. Uh, my name is Melissa, also from Toronto, Canada. Hi. Hi. Um, I'll try to be as, uh, say this as eloquently as possible. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, earth worker and counselor. What uh, is an earth worker do? Um, work with the growing things. Okay. That are around. Um, uh, my question is also around objects um, and this idea around the value of objects and collecting them. And uh, I guess the antithesis of that would be like hoarding as like the negative connotation of collecting. Um, so. You know, hoarding is kind of seen as a negative, whereas collecting is a positive because you are collecting things that are of value rather of things that are just of a person's perceived value. And I, I think about memories in that way or cultural heritage where people are maybe hoard, like you would hoard because you were maybe um, worried that that thing would no longer be there. Um, and so when we think about collecting or what we put value on for these objects, uh, how does who's collecting them um, give them value but also 
who are we collecting them from? Because, you know, as we become a more global globe, uh, <laughs> we, uh, and, you know, these art pieces or cultural items travel far and wide, but um, what, is, what, is it, what is the conflict when the people who they belong to want them back? You know, when we talk about uh, de decolonizing the art practice or art, uh, where art is usually, has in many ways been both a cultural like safekeeping and a way to keep people safe, uh, but also a way to gentrify and colonize. Um, so, long question, but um, how in the museum, whether it's the museum of ideas that doesn't have walls or a museum of, with walls 2.0, 3.0, how do we, what do we show and why and, and, and who, who shows them, I guess. Yeah. Well, I would say that, you know, when, um, you know, I work in education and, uh, you know, we have um, at the at the gallery, there's a very uh, large collection of um, African art that was collected by a single donor based on his personal interest. Um, so the collection of Murray Frum and his wife Barbara Frum. And they, when, um, when we found out we were getting the collection as part of the renovation uh, project, um, they turned to us as educators to animate it and to help to make sense of the collection. And so my colleague Jillian McIntyre did um, uh, in sort of a, she, she, she established a, a community advisory that was made up of people from Cameroon and the Grasslands, which is where most of the collection was from, uh, to help sort of guide and shape um, the way that the interpretive strategy and the understanding of the objects was going to happen. Um, and one of the things that the community advisory said to do was to really reach out to uh, and sort of tie music into... Um, into the didactic and how, and how to kind of understand. So she did, you know, sort of, I don't know, maybe 150 interviews with uh, African musicians, East African musicians uh, who were living in Toronto, because Toronto has this huge population of, um, of East African musicians. It's sort of a phenomenon. <coughs> And so, you know, as an educator, she went out with the person from media services and a, and a audio recorder and a videotape, and they went to interview these different musicians. And one of the musicians that she interviewed, um, you know, did this beautiful, you know, sort of description uh, about her, um, her understanding of these particular objects, and it was made for fantastic content, and it was just a really beautiful interview. And then at the end of it, she said, um, to my colleague, she said, do you have any connections with the Victoria Albert Museum? And Jillian said, well, I mean, maybe. And she said, because my grandfather's head is there and I want to get it back. And it was just like, I've never forgotten that story because it was this, what, there's no training. They don't teach you that in museum studies. Like, there's just no um, way to respond to that without sort of a human, like it was just such a visceral reaction and a really serious, she was dead serious. It was a serious question. And so, you know, how was her grandfather's head being in the V&A and whether or not Jillian could help her get it back any different from any of these objects that she just told this beautiful story about that is now gonna be housed in the AGO's collection that were also somebody's objects that had been collected by this one particular person, right? So I guess I just offer that as an example. I've sort of never forgotten that story. There's, it's just a very complex and fraught tension, the ways that colonialism and museums, objects, collecting, all of those things kind of come together. And ethics is in the core of, or should be in the core of our uh, definition of, of, of professionalism. Um, one key in, in, in one key element in, in, in new collecting practices, and now I'm not talk talking as a moderator, but as a content person, is this idea of shared responsibility. Uh, which is again sort of an ethical cornerstone of how we perceive museum work uh, for now and in the future. And the shared responsibility I find extremely interesting <laughs> and ties to this concept of liquid museums. Um, and I would very much would like to ask you whether or not you want to become a member of COMCO, which is an international committee for collecting development, collecting practices. Um, 
um, theory, practice, and also very much ethics. And there sits a woman <laughs> from Amsterdam, and she's on the new board, and she's very, very interesting. Daniela, maybe you can do a coming out. So she, you, you, de you should definitely have a wine as well together. Um, do, does anybody else want to respond? Yes, you, 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 you I just uh, want to add that. Um, from the new museology documents, we had this uh, idea of eco museums that is more than a building and more than uh, objects, is um, about to um, involve all collectivity, all surroundings, and construct their own museums as um, memory spaces for the collectivity. And uh, there's some few examples of this kind of museum and who decide with get in as an object of reference for memories as the community itself. So just this. Who decides what is important or not? Who decides when a very beautiful and fruitful day comes not to an end, but um, goes into another direction? Um, but you still want to, you want to comment? I, if it's okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I did not know that you wanted to comment, so I did not want to interrupt you. <laughs> no, I just, uh, just a, f just a, I guess a consideration of, um, it's a collective responsibility, you know, um, if we talk about the people of, you know, you, a couple of you said you like, you choose the people over anything else. I wonder if, you know, what, why, is it a, why does it devalue an object to, to then, if you ask permission to maybe make a replica, and then if someone, own, if someone claims that it is part of their family, you know, send it back. It's, it's one of these things of like, we don't have to, we don't have to take what's, what's so important to somebody else just to show it off, uh, or just to maybe say that we know about the history, you know. It, it would mean much more to that community to have it. it it's a very complex, um, a very complex um, 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 subject matter, and I don't want to close the discussion because I think it's very vital. Um, but it's um, something that I think needs uh, maybe another frame or another setting. Uh, but what I do think is that that ethnological um, context and the ethnological museum discourse is, is very much advanced in, 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 in reflecting on, on those issues that I can strongly um, recommend. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you, um, that you open these, again, very ethical, fundamental questions about who decides, who collects, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I hope it's not too much a clash in questions, uh, but you had a question as well. And then your question will be the last question. Okay, vielen Dank. <lacht> Fabian Hofmann, ich komme von der Verliedener Fachhochschule hier in Düsseldorf. Ich würde gerne dieses Thema Macht, ähm, Strukturen äh, nochmal aufgreifen. Sie haben vorhin davon gesprochen, Frau Sternfeld. Warum haben wir ein Problem damit, dass keine Jugendlichen hier sind? Und äh, das kam jetzt auch mit den Liquid Structures äh, zum, zum, äh, zum, äh, wurde zum Thema. War, und ich finde das eine interessante Frage für uns. Also ich finde es gar nicht so interessant, die, die Frage zu stellen, warum ist das Museum nicht partizipativ, sondern die Frage, warum haben wir ein Problem damit? Also wenn ich jetzt an andere Institutionen denke, der Gefängnisdirektor hat überhaupt kein Problem damit, ähm, dass das Gefängnis nicht partizipativ ist. Aber wir haben eins damit. Und das finde ich eine interessante Frage und, und ich würde mich in dieser Runde fragen, warum haben wir dieses Problem? Oi! Ja. Ne, ich habe darauf leider ein bisschen eine traurige Antwort, weil ich nämlich eben glaube, dass Partizipation zum Teil in den Institutionen eingesetzt wird, um sie zu, zu ökonomisieren. So wie Partizipation in den Universitäten eingesetzt wurde, als diese entdemokratisiert wurden, also als die studentische Mitbestimmung abgeschafft wurde, wurden gleichzeitig Evaluierungsbögen eingeführt. Oder Partizipationsprozesse sind ganz wesentliche Prozesse zur Gentrifizierung von Stadtteilen. Also um 
Leuten Rechte und Besitz oder Wohnraum zu nehmen, werden sie einbezogen. Das, das haben wir jetzt real in den letzten Jahren leider an verschiedenen Beispielen in der Gesellschaft mit angesehen. Ein weiterer wesentlicher Teil, der damit zu tun hat, was wir uns fragen müssen, ist ein weiterer wesentlicher Teil, wie die Universitäten ökonomisiert wurden. Und meine steht da an erster Stelle in Finnland. Das ist ganz interessant, ist keine wohlfahrtsstaatliche Institution mehr, sondern ein Corporate. Ist der Paradigmenwechsel vom Lehren zum Lernen. Das heißt, wir haben... Uns wurde dauernd eingetrichtert, dass es nicht mehr, darum, nicht mehr um unser Wissen geht, sondern es geht um das, die, das Wissen der Leute, die da lernen, die in einem Prozess, wo wir uns mittlerweile gegenseitig überwachen und wo das, was sie lernen, sie in Form von Kreditpunkten so mit einer sozusagen Art monetären, selbstökonomisierten Struktur äh, selber wahrnehmen. Das heißt, all das, was uns wichtig ist, nämlich der demokratische Effekt der Partizipation, wurde, die wurde entdemokratisiert, der, das Wichtige am Lernen, wurde, dem wurde das Emanzipatorische genommen und da, das scheint mir sehr wichtig, darauf hinzuweisen, dass wir es ja, dass wir auf Partizipation bestehen müssen, aber auf eine repolitisierte Partizipation. Eine, die wieder nach den Strukturen und nach den Machtverhältnissen fragt. Und in dem Sinn, vielleicht jetzt auch noch mal ganz kurz zurück zu diesem vorigen, ich glaube sozusagen zur Affirmation kommen wir auch nur über den Konflikt. Also ne, nämlich nicht mal nur über die Ethik, nicht mal nur indem wir sagen, ja und diese Objekte, die sind jetzt alle kommen gut, sondern wir müssen über den Konflikt der Frage der Gewaltgeschichte und der Frage danach, inwieweit das ein Angriff ist, überhaupt zu der Möglichkeit einer Affirmation kommen. Und das wäre dann für mich sozusagen die Deprovinzialisierung. Who says that ethical uh, reflections are without conflict? But, um, do, do you see that participatory um, um, discourse as critical as, as Nora um, is, 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 is seeing it? Is it, is it yeah, sort of in the neoliberal or new labor context? I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the, um, the voice from Britain now. Oh, okay, we're leaders in this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree with something I read some years ago by Nancy Fraser about the way in which the um, second wave feminist demands had been turned by neoliberalism into something that would act on behalf of neoliberalism rather than on behalf of um, the basically the radical ideas that, that feminism had presented. Um, uh, for instance, <laughs> one of the things that I would say is that gallery education certainly as I, my understanding, uh, uh, my relation to its history, if you like, in, in Britain, is that it was a more utopian feminist um, challenge to the museum than, for instance, the Gorilla Girls, which I think is quite a safe version of, um, what a, muse of, of a change in a museum. Um, oh, I'm so suddenly overwhelmed by fatigue. I'm sorry, I just can't answer anymore. I'm well, thinking well, it, about it, it, it was already very intelligent what you, what you said. So, um, you wanted to, to, to respond? Um, to You're too tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, please, here, be a bit participatory. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's, it's too complicated uh, just to make another remark, but I would really strongly uh, support what Nora uh, said uh, in the end about participation and its, and its dilemmas and its uh, problems and problematics. And I think this uh, somehow regards to much of the projects we have heard about today <coughs> that have a certain tendency to diminish the role of art, to diminish the, the role of artworks, and to make very, very fast steps kind of outside of traditional ways of uh, um, uh, structures and, uh, and um, kind of the division of labor between uh, curators, educators, and visitors, <laughs> and participants, and so on. 
I mean, all these ideas, from my perspective as, a, as an art historian, are based more or less in the avant-garde model of the 1920s and 30s. Uh, and the idea of Walter Benjamin, Walter Benjamin's text, for instance, about the artist as producer and so on, about the role of the reader uh, who becomes a writer in the Soviet press. Uh, these were, at the time, they were revolutionary, revolutionary ideas and had a very critical political uh, agenda. Nowadays, they are very often, in my, in my point of view, very often very, very close to uh, neoliberal, as you said, but also to even more right-wing um, argumentations about uh, the obsolescence of art and culture and about the focus on the useful things. Uh, this is why I'm critical of your projects, for instance, um, because I wanted and to. No, I just. Uh, I'm, 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 I just finished. Okay. I'm very sorry for no, it's showing you this face again, but. Uh, <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Okay. Sit down. <laughs> Feeling strange somehow. Um, and don't feel strange. In my point of view, <laughs> we have to try, we have to kind of uh, uh, differently, in a different style, to reactivate the artworks we have in our collections, and we have to comment about them. We have to deal with them. We have to um, put them into very different kind of settings and yep. uh, discursive formations and so on, but not to force this kind of dichot dichotomy between, on the one hand, the very conservative uh, arts and museum structure, and on the other hand, the very progressive um, notion of participation and, and so on. So that's why I I'm, for instance, very critical of, of a point of view that tries to uh, get rid of representation. I mean, representation to me is uh, at the core of everything. Uh, e uh, even more nowadays, when people are, uh, the, entire, the entire day they are dealing with representations in diverse media and they are, of course, um, for formed in their kind of thinking and feeling and effects and everything by representations. And art is an expert in representation, in my point of view. So uh, just to get rid of this idea of uh, representation in order to work on a one-to-one -one scale, uh, to me, somehow um, <laughs> gets us all of us into into certain problems <laughs> oh, well, well firstly i wouldn't say that you necessarily get rid of representation but you transform it and you rethink representation in terms of operating in a one-to-one -one scale so, so representation always operates Within, within our kind of uh, within the regime around us, it's never something outside of that. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. Is a kind of reintegration of representation and objects, in fact, into being in play in the world in, in a very in a very complex operational system. Um, and I would also say that I I I never use the word participation. I actively disagree with it. I object to it really strongly. And I got into terrible trouble recently where I could, we have these terrible things in, in the UK. It's like, like giant puppets that walk down the street and everybody gets involved in joining in the puppets and participating in these events. And I compared the, it, it was the organizers and I compared it to a kind of, yeah, a, a march from the 1930s, how everybody just suddenly rallies around and was expected to join in. And I think it's really, it's really dangerous. So I agree with exactly what Nora says. I also so think uh, beyond history, this, I don't think it is, a, it is, a, is, a, is a, in historical terms. This is not purely within the, the, ca the canon of radical modernity, but also, you know, I refer to Ruskin, and I think we can go back to St. Bonaventura in the 13th century. And we, we can find examples of these ways of working, these ways of thinking outside of the West. I mean, if you, there's a great uh, guy called, he's always, you should get him to speak at something, uh, called uh, Huan Sing Chen from Taiwan, and, 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 he, and, he, and he talks about the museum as temple, because this is a very different idea of what, what a collectivization of culture is. He was at the Comco conference, I heard. 
I'm enjoying myself tremendously. And I hope you are enjoying yourself tremendously as well. But we are now giving a big thank you applause to our translators. <laughs> Because I saw it from here, steam is coming out of her ears <laughs> <laughs> and she needs a drink. Um, but I feel that, 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 that we're not at the end of our discussion yet and you are looking at me um, that you want to marry me, but only <laughs> because you get the mic then. So, um, and I'm easily uh, convincible, so I give you the mic. And then I think it is really time to, um, to move over to the next uh, stage of our, our, our being here together. But I felt he, this, is, this is great. Uh, and this is food for going into our evening program. And it's food for you coming back tomorrow. Because I hope you won't feel bored. Um, mein, mein Liebe. Thank you very much. But uh, then you have to speak in English because yeah. everybody... Just, just, just a very short remark. Okay. I, I love the idea to come back to the objects, to the art objects. Um, and I love the idea to get confidence in the art objects again. But I think, or as far as I think, the confidence we can have in art objects is because they are not representational. We can have confidence in art objects as long as they are not con representational. And they are not res representational, and the core of, of, of art is that it's not representational. And I think this is a very, very uh, important difference. So, I could continue, but... Yeah. Um, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, I don't know where you live, but after the reception, we're all going to go to your place. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe we have your address. <laughs> um, my, my, my dear, um, it, it, it's, your, it's your show. I, I don't see your colleague, but um, I, of course, include him as well. I would like to thank you for this first wonderful day. Um, and and, 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 and it, it's becoming more and more interesting and more and more um, provocative and more and more intelligent so it's 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 smart it's it's nice um and i want you to maybe say you know you 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 get the mic um of, of what you gained because you had an idea with this um um first day and and, and did it live up to your expectations <laughs> deutsch or english so that's a task I, <laughs> I think uh, that's a challenge I think um, I'm very happy with all your talks all your lectures it's really a pleasure to listen to you it's a pleasure to listen to the moderator <laughs> thank you so much I think first of all we have to thank you <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's too soon to, I don't know, the head is full. No. Yeah. I think there, uh, there are many uh, topics addressed uh, which I'm very interested in, uh, um, and my colleagues also, and I think uh, Marian Ackermann also, I address you because you started the project, um, and that's what Ooh. we wanted. <laughs> That's what we wanted. We wanted to learn from you, from your experience, from your ideas, from your very, very interesting projects. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm very happy with this day. Thank you also for <laughs> your comments and your questions. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And now we have time for wine. And We have wine. 
uh, vibe und Gesang, you say? I, I don't know about the Gesang, but there's a lot of vibe. There's a lot of <laughs> women in, in the field uh, who owns the museum. Um, and there, there is a reception where we have something to eat, but not everybody uh, um, has put their name on the list. And we, of course, talked about it. What do we do if there are more people than there are people on the list? And then we thought, then we just share what, what is there. And then everybody has two bites less, but we still are together and are having fun. So... Um, so let us um, let us continue with alcohol or non-alcoholic beverages. Thank you so much. Seeing you tomorrow.